All right. <laughs> What's up, good people? We back. And welcome to Inconspicuous Thoughts. I'm your boy. Say it with me. The unapologetic, notorious shh. A smile. And we back, baby. We back with another one. And again, I want to thank everybody for their continued support as I continue to grow my YouTube channel. Slow, crawl before you walk, but we're getting there. I'm getting a little comfortable, you know. Spread my wings, fly away. Okay, I never said I was a good singer either. <laughs> so, today we're going to react to Jean Claude Van Damme, Art of self destruction. And before we even get to the video, let me tell you, I'm a huge Jean Claude Van Damme fan. <laughs> of course, uh, the first movie I saw him in was uh, No Satreat, No Surrender. I uh, hope I got that name right. He'll probably be talking about it in this, but uh, he played a Russian uh, kickboxer, I believe it was. Yeah, so uh, it was weird, you know, seeing him in that. But of course, everybody knows him more so from Blood Sport. I mean, that's the movie I think definitely put him on the map. You know, he did Cyborg and other stuff like that. Uh, of course, then there's Double Impact with him and... No, where well, he played himself, uh, brothers. He was twins. That's what he did. Then, of course, uh, what was it? Uh, Double Team? I think him and Dennis Rodman? Yeah, that was the name of the movie. Uh, but my favorite John claude Van Damme movie is uh, Lionheart. Uh, it's na it's overseas is known as Leon. But uh, me and my brother, we used to watch a lot of that. My brother, Boss Man, we watched tons. We watched that movie a ton. We borrowed it from one of my mom's family friend, uh, mom's friend, and uh, we watched it on repeat. As soon as it was done, rewind it, watch it again. Uh, some people would say the storyline's a little cheesy, but hey, I'm good with cheese, baby. Put it on a hamburger. Make that bun nice. Dinner. <laughs> but before we go on, to this react to react to this uh video here ladies and gentlemen what can you do for your boy i'm grinding i'm working hard I'm working hard to put food on my family's table and all you got to do is smash the subscribe button baby and if you're here hit the like button and comment it's not hard you could be like, this is your favorite John claude film, or this is your favorite John claude moment. It doesn't matter what it is. What's your best film? What's your best moment? Is he one of the best uh, action films of all time? Interact, baby. Welcome. Interact with each other. So uh, we go on to this, and uh, like I said, just have, have an open mind. This is this individual's opinion, and we're going to watch it, and we're going to be fine with it. Psychologists <laughs> Let's go. say... Childhood is where we all began. When Jean Claude was a child, his parents decided to mock him a bit, just like all parents usually do with any other child, and signed him up for ballet. As a young man, he won several European karate championships and got his own gym from his first wife, where he taught oh, people to they would have John Claude splits. split. His first appearance on screen That's was what the as women an really like. movie with Rutger Hauer. That one was shot in Belgium. Some Hawkeye there told Van Damme that with such talents, he should conquer Hollywood. And that's exactly what he did. But there's a catch. Young Van Damme struggled to break through in Hollywood for a long time. For many years, he was a taxi driver, mm. pizza delivery guy, and even a construction worker. Five years, no roles. But hey, you got to struggle before the success comes. You know, in the short film Monaco Forever. Jean Claude portrayed a gay karate fighter in there. The mm. movie was a failure, but Van Damme got lucky. That year, he met another karate fighter and became his partner. Oh, sparring partner. Chuck gave Jean Claude the opportunity. Wow, he sparred with Chuck Norris. I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. Wow. Wow. I mean, that's that's big right there. The man sparred with Chuck Norris. So, didn't know that. Learned something new right here today. Need to be a stunt double in the film Missing in Action. Thanks to Chuck, Van Damme got his foot in Canon Films doors, a studio he was running around in hopes of getting any role. That opportunity came with the movie Breaking, where Jean-Claude can be noticed in the background. He says at some point, he performed his famous split, but the mean director cut that moment out. While Jean-Claude was sweet-talking Chuck and the Cannon studio, he managed to get married successfully for the second time and became a manager in his wife's father's construction company, where he had previously worked. 
Jean-Claude caught some Russian swearing there, and that helped to get his first real role in No Retreat, No Surrender. Russian Sukhobliat will come in handy again a bit later for Van Damme, but we'll get to it. So, shooting No Retreat, No Surrender had some yeah, issues. Yeah, boy. Everyone improvised that was on my set, introduction and the to Belgian him. took full advantage of this to showcase all his talents. Colleagues complained Jean-Claude didn't understand they were just soft and gentle actors, not sparring partners <laughs> that actually could be punched full power. Apparently, that's what sparring Get out Chuck Norris does ring, to a person. Sucker. They say someone was even taken to a hospital <laughs> once. Such behavior became the actor's trademark for a while. Mm. Thanks to the success of No Retreat, No Surrender, Van Damme was noticed, and he managed to get into blood off me. Before I'm moving the best. there, let's stick a bit with honorable mention. <laughs> a lesser-known Jean-Claude role as a predator in the eponymous film. In reality, that's not quite accurate. According to Arnold Schwarzenegger, Van Damme complained and fainted from the heat more than actually filming. Mm. But even that wasn't his main problem. Most likely, seeing Arnold's name, Jean-Claude signed the contract immediately and didn't bother to read it. Mm. How else can you explain his dissatisfaction with the fact that the Predator costume hit his pretty actor's face? There's also another version. During filming the confrontation scene between Arnold and the Predator, the director noticed Van Damme looked too tiny next to the gigantic Arnold and decided to replace him with someone more impressive. The versions that Jean-Claude injured someone with his high kicks on set are ridiculous. The cast was full of huge ripped guys, and there's a suspicion they didn't give a damn about all these magic infinite spins. And since Jean-Claude later had a cameo in McTiernan's movie with Schwarzenegger, I assume he was a good boy this time. Okay, now here's my thing. Uh, the whole uh, Predator thing, I've heard so many stories where he was in the movie, he did film some of the uh, scenes, but then he left production. Uh, I don't know, I feel like that's a mistake. I mean, you're in Hollywood, and you get an opportunity like that, and you're in a movie with so many heavy hitters. I don't care how small the role is. I don't care if they don't even see you. Just your name value next to those individuals is huge. I mean, damn, I would have been fine sweeping in the beginning scene of the movie, you know, when they both did that, you know, clinch up and they showed their biceps, uh, him and Carl Weathers. Matter of fact, RIP Carl Weathers. Uh, it's weird. I don't understand why somebody would, like, not want to be part of that. I mean, it's just so much man meat in that movie and you could have been a part of it instead you left i mean it didn't hurt him then but i'm pretty sure it, it kind of gave him that attitude like if i don't like something i can leave and in the beginning it probably worked but i know in hollywood they don't take too kindly to that they'll be like bro you can go somewhere else with that trash <laughs> the role in blood sport changed everything there it is blood he got sport. into this film directly after no retreat no surrender Bloodsport was based on real events, supposedly. supposedly. A participant in the real events was Allegedly. so pissed at Jean-Claude's physique that he made him sit in a split and meditate for the next three months until his muscles grow big enough. Mm -hmm. The movie didn't work, so the post-production period dragged on. Meanwhile, Jean-Claude managed to portray another Tovarish in the film Black Eagle. We all remember how dramatically and realistically the Belgian got smacked in his best movies, and that made his revenge afterwards so satisfying and rewarding. Jean-Claude realized if Bloodsport didn't succeed, the actor risked being stuck as a punching bag. That's why he refused to shoot a scene in which his character would die at the hands of the protagonist. Not because the mean Japanese fought back on the set much better than the soft American actors. Sure, right. Whatever it was, it was the right thing to do. Black Eagle went straight to video, and Van Damme's shame went unnoticed. <laughs> Bloodsport gathered dust on the shelf for about two years already, and it seemed impossible to make something that would satisfy the producers. The movie was about to be released straight to video, but mm. Van Damme intervened. They say he spent several months re-editing the film. The result finally pleased the bosses. The home release earned the studio $11 million on a budget of just one. Critics wanted to award him a golden raspberry, but Van Damme didn't care. Canon studio bosses knew who had saved their butts. Mm. The same trick was also once pulled by another street fighter with a bad attitude. When this Okay, now, I'm sorry I'm pausing, but when you think about blood sport you know the impact that blood sport had you know especially for his career to think that this movie sat on a shelf for two years two years so you always think what if it came out earlier you know i always go would he be a bigger star would it have a bigger impact would it you know especially international or domestic domestic is here international you know some movies will make about 10 million dollars here but then can make 100 million overseas so 
especially where it was shot. I think it was Bangkok. Uh, somebody can correct me in the uh, comment section. Um, man, just imagine if it came out earlier. You know, what would it have done? You know, so these are things I always ask about anything. Any movie, music, it doesn't matter. Just putting something on the shelf and not really trying to engage it or grow it. And you could think what could have been. But still, despite the, uh, you know, the uh, studio's worst efforts, as we could say, the movie still became successful. This video receives 1,000 likes. I will release a video about this. In Cyborg, <laughs> Van Damme was filmed with a broken camera on a Ooh, mobile phone what? from a well-known old Finnish brand. Damn. The sets were reused from two other films, including a canceled Spider-Man action movie. Mm. Cyborg had a budget of two bags of peanuts and a beer can with production deadline <laughs> like yesterday. Ooh, Predictably, the <laughs> test screenings were a disaster, and Jean-Claude had to once again use his marvelous Belgian editing skills to save Canon Studios. The film grossed $10 million on a budget of $500,000. Whoa. But even this miracle couldn't keep Canon alive for long. Canon's decline only had a Still positive effect on million. Van Damme's Damn. career later on. That's crazy. On Cyborg's set, Van Damme overdid it and injured one of the actor's eyes. Of course All he did. All the beaten and humiliated actors from No Retreat, No Surrender, immediately showed up at court as well. <laughs> Van Damme had to pay the newborn pirate the sum he demanded, which was known to be more than $10,000, but probably much more. Jean-Claude's next movie, Kickboxer, that dude, oh my god, that dude eyes freaked me out. Uh, and there was an image when they had the, the, you know, the grand finale, the final fight, you know. You know, I'm going to see if I can find it in post-editing, and I'll put it on the screen while I'm talking. That dude had an eight-pack. <laughs> I mean, I was like, how the hell you get an eight-pack? I'm like, this dude's stomach. Or, yeah, his stomach was just, ooh, that boy ain't nothing but crackers and water. <laughs> but I was like, damn, this boy is stacked. But whatever, man, let's just get it. Received a more decent budget, $1.5 million. This one can rightfully oh, be yeah, considered the kickboxer. I forgot about that Van one. Damme How film. can I forget about that with the dance scenes. scene? And it was this film that started Jean-Claude's affection. For showing his buttocks on screen. <laughs> this lovely trend continued and flourished in the next movies. Despite such awesomeness, critics were unimpressed and called Van Damme a hillbilly version of Schwarzenegger. The Damn. film grossed $15 million in the U.S. alone on a budget of $1.5 million and made the Belgian a rising action star. And in his next movie, he was determined to prove to Hollywood he could not only kick and gallop, but also act. Same did Brad Pitt once. And mm -hmm. it was disturbing. Check it out here. Anyway, Van Damme's subsequent films, such as Lionheart, Yay, Death Warrant, Double Lionheart. Impact, and Universal Soldier, <laughs> consistently grossed more and more at the box office. The Belgian gradually became a highly in-demand action actor. Lionheart was filmed by Imperial. Yes. It signed a two-film contract with Van Damme during Lionheart, making Black Eagle. My movie. There was no script or ideas, but the obligation to shoot remained. So Van Damme had to come up with the concept himself and participate in writing the script. So, again, I said it was cheesy, but the man had to come up with the concept himself? Damn. Damn, I'm a hater then. <laughs> so he came up with everything himself. So that's that's cool. See, again, gives me a whole new respect for, uh, you know, John John claude Van Damme. But uh, love it or hate it, man. Like I said, I love Lionheart. And it's on Amazon Prime, so I know. <laughs> Universal distributed the film. That was huge, as Jean-Claude moved from B-tier projects to mainstream cinema. Death Warrant was produced by the Canon Group, which went bankrupt before the film was released. That's exactly why the movie Run, boy, so they're coming to get that the booty. transferred to MGM Studio, which assembled it poorly <laughs> and released it after several years without any promotion. Despite that, it managed to collect a decent box office. With a budget of $4 million, it grossed more than 16. Most likely the studio made a ton of money by releasing the movie on home media, but no reliable info can be found about that. Double Impact was the first movie in Double which Van Impact. Two yeah, movies, boy. Earning positive reviews from both critics and audiences. Through Twins, the film managed to satisfy fans of both sides of the Belgian. The Sweetie Pie Heartbreaker. There it is again, that split. Alpha <laughs> Savage. As part of the promotion for Universal Soldier, Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren staged a conflict on the red carpet of the Cannes Film Festival. 
that can and should be considered a successful viral marketing attempt. At that time, Jean-Claude did everything he they could did to the promote They did the boxing wrestling stuff the just to garnish some In the romantic uh, drama, promotion. Nowhere to Run, Rosanna Arquette stated it was originally supposed to be a serious film with Mel Gibson without any action. But Van Damme stormed in and made the new screenwriter, Leslie Boehm, rewrite everything, adding fights and punches. The only thing left from the original script was the storyline of the escaped convict and the widow with two children. Mm. Joe Estes wrote the original version of the screenplay and publicly disowned the film after these changes. For Nowhere to Run, the Belgian received his highest fee at the time, $2.5 million. On the set of Hard Target, Jean-Claude undressed with Hard Target, that's John Woo movie. And the director John Woo had to hastily cut out all this greatness to get the desired age rate. (laughs) After seven re-edits, the final version still did not satisfy the superstar. Van Damme felt it was too little of his own amazing self in the movie, so he decided to use his marvelous Belgian editing skills again. But this time, Top Dogs didn't allow it. The Magister Sam Raimi was producing the movie, and he defended John Woo's vision. So... He had the final say. The movie became one of Van Damme's best, grossing $74 million with a budget of 18. Hard Target marked John Woo's spectacular debut in Hollywood. Thanks to him, we got masterpieces like Hard Boiled and Face Off. Mm. Time Cop, released in 1994, can be considered kind of sort of Van Damme's actor magnum opus. It's one of his best works, according to critics. Time Cop was based on Dark Horse comic book and was one of Jean-Claude's two projects that grossed over the $100 split again. million. <laughs> Expectedly, after reaching such a success streak, the Belgian self-esteem skyrocketed to phenomenal heights. The next movie was probably the turning point oh, in Van Damme's no. career. He had to choose between... <laughs> Street Fighter. Oh, man, people were so geek for this movie, man. They were so geek for Street Fighter. I mean, obviously you had that, and I think uh, Mortal Kombat. Hopefully he talks about it. I don't know. But uh, I don't know. I felt like uh, he would have been better in Mortal Kombat. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm going off a wish list, thinking him could have been, he could have been Johnny Cage. I think uh, that would have been a uh, good one. But uh, I can understand where he picked uh, Street Fighter. You know, thinking maybe that'll maybe the script was better. But man, Street Fighter was a huge letdown. But let's see what he talks about. <laughs> Between two films based on popular fighting games, Mortal Kombat. Oh, see, and Mortal Street Kombat. Fighter. Okay, Mortal here we Kombat go. would have been a better choice. Yep. Yes, it's yep. obvious. Like now in present days, but back then it wasn't. Mm. Check it out yourself. Street Fighter had a bigger budget and paid more, eight million dollars. Mm. The franchise was more successful. The director wrote the scripts for Die Hard, Forty Eight mm. Hours, and Commando. He had support of powerful producer Edward Pressman known for Wall Street and Conan, the Barbarian. And Mortal Kombat was directed by some suspicious, unknown Paul Anderson. Okay, so the promise so with Street Fighter was Street better. Fighter, and that's precisely what Jean-Claude did. The film had a bunch of problems. Constant script revisions, mm. issues with the Thai authorities, and as a cherry on top, the stomach cancer of the main antagonist, yeah, Raul, Raul Jr. But even all that mm. would not have been R. so R. bad if not for Van Damme. In his words, he was spending up to $10,000 a week on cocaine at the time. Ooh. And the best thing he could have done for the success of Street Fighter was to stop getting high. Van Damme would He's either show up on set cocked candy. up or was hung over. Pretty often, he didn't show up at all, stating his muscles are in great need to be properly pumped. The Belgian's <laughs> behavior was real nasty. He was sassy, mean, inadequate, and pissed everyone off. Everyone. Frankly speaking, the director, Steven D'Souza, can't be blamed. He acted like a real G of all Gs finishing the movie on Capcom's deadline. It required multiple script revisions and rewrites, reshooting half the film and relocating shooting from Thailand to Australia. Technically, Ooh. Street Fighter wasn't a failure. The domestic box office was weak, but International did the trick and made $99 million on a $35 million budget. Okay. However, critics and audiences hated the movie. Even more important here is that rumors about Jean-Claude's nasty behavior quickly spread throughout Hollywood. Mm. Producers didn't want to work with him anymore, oh. and screenwriters stopped writing scripts for him. Street Fighter was so pathetic, it was even ranked the 27th worst film in history by Empire Magazine. Damn. But everything was going to get even worse than that. Really? The next film, Sudden Death, Sudden Death. was rejected by everyone. Schwarzenegger, I like Sudden Stallone, Death. I liked it. I'm Bruce sorry. Willis. Stallone called the script raw and unfinished. And Bruce Willis didn't understand why he was invited in a Die Hard copycat <laughs> while he was preparing to shoot the third Die Hard. Originally, Sudden Death was funnier and more comedic. It was supposed to be a parody action movie at least according to the original scriptwriter Randy Feldman. The only scene left from his script 
was the fight with the hockey club mascot. Wow. And that sounds pretty sick. Look at Arnold's career path during this period. So here as well, the comedic approach could make the movie stand out. But our hero Jean-Claude decided to remove all the jokes and make a serious action thriller. For this film, the Belgian received an impressive fee of $5 million. Ooh. And it was the last time he got something like that. Ooh. The movie failed domestically and made $64 million internationally. And he got it paid might not five look like a flop mil. to you, but considering all the economics, it wasn't Ooh. enough for the studio to return its $35 million budget. Damn. I explained box office economics in this video about the Terminator franchise. Check it out afterwards. So, for Jean-Claude, this was something new and alarming. The planned sequel was immediately canceled. Mm. Jean-Claude understood where his career was heading. Remembering Bloodsport, he decided only Van Damme could save Van Damme. Mm -hmm. His contract with Universal allowed to release one more film. So he wrote the script, called the movie The Quest, the Quest and wanted yep. Oliver Stone to direct it. Stone got it right and politely declined. In the end, <laughs> Van Damme had to direct the film himself. As if it wasn't enough, Jean-Claude got a lawsuit from his former Bloodsport partner, Frank Dux. Really? Frank claimed Van Damme had not paid him for consulting on the script and presumably stole his story. Mm. Dux lost in court, but the Writers Guild was on his side. Similar to Sudden Death, the quest underperformed in the box office. Universal could no longer ignore the recurring Van Damme's failures and terminated the contract with him. Damn. Jean-Claude then signed with Columbia Pictures and tried to repeat the twin trick from Double Impact, impressing critics with the film Maximum Risk. However, the critics weren't fooled this time, and in some territories, the movie went straight to video. In Double Team, Jean-Claude starred alongside his friend Mickey Rourke. <laughs> Van Damme's films had maintained some level of profitability, up to that point. The unbearable weight of Rourke's massive talent sank the movie. With a budget of $30 million, the film grossed only 11. Oh Critics hated my it, God. most of the criticism was directed at basketball player Dennis Rodman. He received three Golden Raspberry Awards. So let me get this straight. You're gonna blame Dennis Rodman for it. He's not an actor. He was a person just to enhance the movie. You know, he was a big time player at the time, obviously through the basketball, so. How do you blame Dennis Rodman for that? <laughs> I'm, again, again, I'm a John Claude fan. I'm not taking offense to anything he's saying. Uh, I didn't think Double uh, Team was that bad. Was it great? No. But uh, it wasn't bad either. And uh, I, I just feel like a lot of stuff, people go to these movies with high expectations to think they're going to be, I don't know, engage in a good storyline when most of these action films are just about let's get you to the action let's give you enough of a plot to just want to see stuff blow up i'm sorry that's literally all i have for you because you just want to see stuff blow up <laughs> including worst screen duo with van damme one should feel sympathy for rourke here at the time it seemed his career was reviving but with this film he again fell flat on his face damn Columbia Pictures got burned twice and realized Jean-Claude wouldn't succeed. In the next movie, Van Damme starred with Rob Schneider. What could go wrong? Sony distributed the film. Oh, the yeah, uh, knockoff, knockoff. for them to knock stop off, working yeah. with the Belgian. A streak of Jean-Claude's bad luck started. One after another, his movies were going straight to home video. And the former karate mates pounced on him, exposing Van Damme's fake talent. Some even tried to challenge him to professional fights. Really? But Jean-Claude refused, understanding who would benefit more from this. He continued to punch his peers, though, and one story stands out in particular. Stallone mentioned in one of his interviews, there was a conflict between Steven Seagal and Van Damme around this time. It happened at Sly's party. Seagal listened to some enlightened internet experts and confronted Van Damme about his karate skills. With his signature arrogance, of course, Jean-Claude kept his cool and offered to throw some <laughs> fists to prove his point. Oh, like Steven a true Seagal. Aikido master, Seagal declined and left. A fight between such titans would inevitably lead to the annihilation of all existence. That's obvious. Jean-Claude wasn't concerned for the fate of the world, though. He followed Seagal to some nightclub oh, and challenged no. him again. Stallone did not reveal how the story ended, only ominously concluding Van Damme proved to be stronger. So, it seems Seagal got smacked after all. Jean-Claude told later Beat that around this time, Elvis Universal Presley, approached that him is, with uh, an offer to Steven make three Seagal. films of $12 million <laughs> each. Pretty hard to believe that, considering his history of flops with the studio. But Van Damme insists that it did happen, and that this refusal was what finally got him canceled in Hollywood. Not because he was a naughty boy and his films flopped at the box office. A quick note here, his highest fee up to that point was $8 million for Street Fighter. Mm. Jean-Claude continued to participate in movies that went straight to home video. Some of them were canceled before the release. 
For example, Universal Soldier, the return was so terrible that everyone pretended it never happened, and future sequels would simply ignore it. Everyone destroyed this movie, and it marked the end of the Belgians' mainstream career. It is hard to imagine the psychological pressure Van Damme felt during this period, as the budgets of his films were only reducing, and none of his films were released in American cinemas. Around this time, Jean-Claude was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Mm. Those who understand what the heck that is, get it now. Mm. Jean-Claude wasn't shy talking about his illness in interviews, saying at times he was the nicest young gentleman on the planet, and sometimes, well, sometimes you would have just instantly hated him, let's say that. In 1999, the Belgian attempted another comeback, again, using his marvelous Belgian editing skills. Inferno movie even got some ovations during test screening. After all, the film was directed by the person who made the first Rocky and the Karate Kid, okay. and produced by Evzen Kolar, hmm. who also produced Double Impact. But Van Damme decided that such success wasn't enough, and it could be even greater. However, this time, after his marvelous editing, the miracle didn't happen. The movie was released straight on home video. <sighs> but even more crap was going down the road. During this period, there was also a story of a club brawl, where Jean-Claude had a conflict with his former bodyguard, Chuck Zito. He was then dating Van Damme's fourth ex-wife, and the actor confronted Chuck, saying he doesn't have a heart. After mutual insults and some flexing, a scuffle took place. According to Mickey Rourke, if not for his incredible boxing talent, Van Damme would have been done for. Club owners confirmed the story, but many witnesses said Jean-Claude was casually giving autographs as if nothing had happened. No signs of injury also weren't there, like any court cases or comments from Van Damme himself. The story could be true, or just a fake blown up by the tabloids. But either way, it left a bad taste in the mouth. Mm. Jean-Claude continued to star in films that went straight to home video, and his old habits remained. He kept making movies where he played twins and broke his hands on movie colleagues. Some of these films were released in cinemas in certain European countries, but they grossed a few bucks. Around 2008, Jean-Claude had a glance of hope. JCVD movie. Yes. It was released in French cinema. Yes, I love the this movie. The film is notable. I actually it's probably own this the movie. only genuinely good one with Van Damme in many years. It received a ton of positive reviews, saying Jean-Claude unexpectedly showed his dramatic side. For seven minutes straight, he turns his soul inside out in a monologue about his thorny past and mm. complicated fate. Critics from Time magazine even said that if it weren't for Heath Ledger, the Oscar that year should have gone to Van Damme. Wow. However, the film flopped at of the course, box office, of course. possibly because Jean-Claude did not participate in its promotion. He later explained that his dog, named Scarface, went into sudden clinical death. It seems Scarface had to party for both while Van Damme was busy filming. All joking aside, giving oh up your God. only chance of a comeback in Why years would you... to support your loved one. Why would you not support this movie? This movie was phenomenal. I absolutely love this movie. Um, it's so different from anything that uh, Van Damme has done that, I don't know, man. I'm sitting here trying to figure out, sometimes it's our own fault that we just think we're better or bigger than what we really are. And I mean, someone in his place, I can understand the ego of, well, this is how I have it. This is the vision I have. But. You know, JCVD, that movie is phenomenal. And if you guys have not watched it, I just give it a watch. Um, it's very good. It really shows that he has the acting range. And, uh, you know, the director and everybody that worked with him, it's just sad that he didn't promote the movie because it would have gone somewhere. It would have gone somewhere. I mean, I know uh, everybody knows he was in um, Expendables 2. Uh, he was the villain. Which was which was fine, but one thing that pissed me off was um uh it was a rumor that he was going to be in uh what was that Rush Hour three he was going to be the brother of uh Jackie Chan in there like the adoptive brother character, so I was all excited you know I was like oh me and my wife and my kids went to the movies to go see it and I'm looking at the credits you know opening credits going I'm like I haven't seen Van Damme's name you know why, why they ain't showing Van Damme's name you know so I'm all geek he's not in the movie. Only to learn that somewhere during a negotiation and everything, everything broke off. So again, Van Damme hurt himself again because that would have been a perfect movie to be in. You don't have to be the star of the movie to be a big part of the movie. I mean, there's so many people whose name are not on the marquee who steals the scene whenever they're on it. I mean, think Cat Williams and Friday After Next. I mean, damn. It, when you think of Friday After Next, you think of Cat Williams. Of course, you think of Mike Epps. But, you know... Cat Williams, you could recite damn near every catchphrase he had in the movie. So I just feel Van Damme just kind of hurt himself by his own uh, 
his own vices. So, well, let's get on with this. Is a respectable move. The dog later recovered. Okay. And Van Damme said God rewarded him for the sacrifice with participation in the Expendables yes, 2. Yeah. The story with the Damn, Expendables was it. actually quite interesting. Van Damme refused to participate in the first part. However, what? JCVD deeply moved Stallone, and he approached Jean-Claude again with an offer to play the villain in the sequel. Mm. The Expendables 2, released in 2012, grossed $314 million on a budget of $100 million. That was the only film with Van Damme that made it to American cinemas after the flop of the second Universal Soldier in 1999. Mm. Notable thing here, critics praised the Belgian the most, among other chat oldies, for his enhanced dramatic performance, they say. Van Damme has moments of brilliance sometimes, such as the Volvo truck commercial or the <laughs> Jean-Claude Van Johnson series, under the direction of Ridley Scott. But these do not significantly change his situation in the movie industry. It's hard to say the actor was ruined by poor role choices, when Jean-Claude started his career, he did everything for the success of his films. Mm -hmm. Unlike many, he's truly a self-made man. But by 1992, when real success finally reached Van Damme, the actor was faster and ran ahead of him. Mm. A difficult character, often accompanying talent, combined with a growing ego, that made him unbearable for colleagues. And this was later buffed with drugs to a genuine mental disorder. It was a vicious circle. Drugs caused anxiety, which was worsened by a declining career, leading him back to drugs. In this regard, the Belgian somewhat deserves empathy. If he had taken control of himself and his life a bit earlier, he would have had a much better chance for a triumphant comeback. That's true. That's true. In the 2020s, he apparently doesn't film as much as he could and spends more time with his family. Okay. He is still with his fifth wife, who was also his third wife. She <laughs> supported him during his rise period until 1992, and later when they reunited in 1999, he said that she had always been his true love. God gave him his dream of being a superstar, and then immediately knocked him down to teach him the true values of a man. Mm. Maybe it's just his age, but he's he matured. Seems to have learned his lesson. Yeah, he matured. Okay. Hey, that was a good one. That was a good one. Uh, what's that? Uh, Hollywood uh, lore. Uh, of course, everything will be down in the description, linked to this full video, so you can uh, watch it and comment on there, possibly even subscribe. Um, again, I'm not going to try to make it too long, but um. Huge Van Damme fan. It sucks to see, you know, what depths he went down, you know, different roads and avenue when uh, he's a very good actor, very good action star. But me being that um, I grew, you know, I'm you know born in 78, so I got to experience all of the 80s pretty much with those action films and definitely the 90s. Oh, my God, you know, Van Damme is up there. You know, some people will say it's Schwarzenegger, it's uh, Arno, and it's uh, Bruce Willis, in no particular order, in no particular order. And then, who's fourth? Who's on that list? You know, people will say Chuck Norris as well, but Chuck Norris, I feel like didn't do a lot of movies, but I'll put him in there, Chuck Norris as well. So, you ask yourself, who's, who's on your uh, Mount Rushmore of action films, of uh, action stars? So it should be interesting being that you got action stars of today, early 2000s, 90s, 80s, and even 70s. But huge Van Damme fan. Uh, I wish him nothing but the best. I'm glad to see he's found some solace in his later years. But if I was to do a movie now and I had a budget and I could negotiate with Van Damme, he would be in the movie. I would deal with his attitude. Why? Because, well, I'm married and I have kids. And I also have attitude problems myself, so I can't negotiate. Now, granted, I'm not bipolar because I'm a Bulls fan. I've dealt with a lot of bad. <laughs> but I digress. But hey, everybody, I hope you guys found some joy in this, uh, even though it did talk about a lot of bad uh, stuff for someone's career. But, you know, we get to sit down, watch a video together, interact with each other. Um, like I said, your boy's getting better. Still got a lot of growth to do, but I love doing this. This is so much fun. Just sit back, you know, watching a lot of the content creators. And, you know, I still get joy out of watching a lot of content creators and uh, support a lot of them as well. So uh, support your boy. You know, hit that subscribe button. You know, got tons of content you can go back on the channel and watch ever since I've relaunched uh, my own personal channel. Um, um, and as well as hit the like button. You know, if you like it. Just hit the like button. It's not going to hurt you. And comment. You know, tell me what's your best uh, Van Damme moment or movie. 
Uh, is he on the Mount Rushmore of uh, action stars? Um, or what's your route, uh, Mount Rushmore of action stars? I mean, I know you got to have some people out there. And it's not going to have Stallone on it, maybe. I don't know. It's not no swipe to me. It's your personal opinion. And express it. So, again, from your boy, the unapologetic, notorious Ace Mob, thank you for taking the time watching this. I know you could be doing anything else, but you took the time to watch this. So hopefully you enjoy it, and hopefully you'll come back. So if you haven't heard it from anyone in your life, listen, no matter what, always remember to be humble and kind. Love, baby. Ha, ha, ha.